Uh-huh. Okay. <clears throat> Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihar Gupi Janavalla Jai Yogiri Varadari Jaya Giri Varadhari Shodhanandana Brajajana Ranjan Shodhanandana Brajajana Ranjan Yamuna Tira Vanajari Yamuna Tira Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava, Radha Madhava Radha. Jai Radha Madhav Radha Madhav Radhe Jai Jagannata Jai Baladeva Subhadra Ma Jai Sudarshana Jai Jagannata Jai Baladeva Jai Subhadra Devi Jai Sudarshana 
जय गोपाल देव जय गोपाल देव जय गोपाल देव जय गोपाल देव जय गौर निताय जय गौर निताय जय गौर निताय जय गौर निताय जय जय प्रभु पाठ प्रभु पाठ जय जय प्रभु 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 जय जय श्री पा श्री पी पे जय श्री पी प जय गुरु महाराज शिल श्रीपाद की जय जगत गुरु शिल पाद की जय जय ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवतम की जय समेत गुरु भक्तविंद की जय तो टुडे वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम द भागवतम वर्स नंबर 35 right 6 canto 16 chapter prescribed duties for mankind text number 35 om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्रायद्रेशु नष्ट प्रायद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठिकी भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठिकी चौम बस नंबर थर्टी फाइव तब विभव खलु भगवान तब विभव खलु भगवान जगत उदय स्थिति लयादीनी जगत उदय स्थिति लयादीनी विश्व सृजस्ते हम शाम शास विश्व सृजस्ते शाम शाम शा तत्रती पृथक अभी मत्या तत्र मृषा स्पृधंती पृथक पृथक भी मत्या तब विभव खलु भगवान तव विभव खलु भगवन जगत उदय स्थिति लयादीनी जगत उदय स्थिति लयादीनी विश्व सृजस्ते हम शाम शास विश्व सृजस्ते शम शाम त्र मृषा स्पर्धंती पृथक अभिमत्या त्र मृषा स्पर्धंती पृथक अभिमत्या ट्रांसलेशन पर्पट बाय डिवाइन ग्रेस श्री प्रभुपाद प्रभुपाद के जाए ट्रांसलेशन माय डियर लॉर्ड दिस कॉस्मिक मैनिफेस्टेशन एंड इट्स क्रिएशन मेंटेनेंस एंड अनहाइलेशन आर ऑल but your opulences since lord brahma and the other creators are nothing but small portions of a portion of you their partial power to create does not make them god or ishvara their consciousness of themselves as separate lords is therefore merely false prestige it is not valid 
Prabhupada by Prabhupada, a devotee who has fully surrendered to the lotus feet of the Lord knows very well that the creative energy of the living entities from Lord Brahma down to the small ant exists because the living entities are part and parcel of the Lord. In Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter, 7th verse, the Lord says, Mamaivam sho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. The living entities are nothing but very small portions of the Supreme Spirit, like the sparks of the fire. Because they are part of the Supreme, they have a creative quality in very minute quantity. The so-called scientists of the modern materialistic world are proud because they have created modern facilities like great airplanes. But the credit for creating the airplane should actually go to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, not to the scientists who have invented or created the so-called wonderful products. The first consideration is the intelligence of the scientist. One must be elevated by the dictation of the Supreme Lord who says in the Bhagavad Gita 1515, Mata Smritir Jnanam Apohanam Cha. From me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. Because the Supreme Lord as Super Soul sits within the core of every living entity's heart, the dictation by which one advances in scientific knowledge or creative faculties comes from him. Furthermore, the ingredients to manufacture wonderful machines like airplanes are also supplied by the Lord, not by the scientists. Before the airplane was created, its ingredients already existed, having been caused by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But when the manifested creation of the airplane is ruined, the remaining debris is a problem for the so-called creators. Another example is that the West is creating many automobiles. The ingredients for these cars are supplied, of course, by the Supreme Lord. And the intelligence for the so-called creation is also supplied by the Lord. Ultimately, when the cars are demolished, the so-called creators are faced with the problem of what to do with their ingredients. The actual creator, the original creator, is a personality of God. Only in the interim does someone create something with the intelligence supplied by the Lord, and later the creation again becomes a problem. Therefore, the so-called creator is not to be credited with the act of creation. The only credit goes to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is rightly stated herein that the credit for all the opulences of creation, maintenance, and annihilation belongs to the Supreme Lord not to the living entities. Om Ajnanati Mirandasa Jnana Anjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama Amom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Swarupta Mudar Swaminiti Namine Nama Sat Bhakta Manai Manipur Udbhavaicha Gopadnasatvani Prachara Niratayate Namom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesh Shunyavadi Pashyata Devsatarine Vancha Kalpatarurvesha Kripa Sindhu Vyayavacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Nama Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Sankirtanam Yasya Sarva Papa Pranashanam Pranamo Dukkha Shamanaha Tam Namami Harim Param Sansara Sagare Magnam Dinam Mam Karunanide Karmagraja Grihitangam Mamudhara Pavarnavad 
ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ಭಾಗವತಮಾಕ್ಯೋಯಂ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹಿ ಸ್ವೀಕೃತ ಮಯಾನಾಥ ಮುಖ್ಯರ್ಥಸಾಗರೆ so we are continuing the sixth canto this uh, chapter on the protection by the lord poshanam and um, in this particular verse we are dealing with you know this authority uh, supreme authority and how the lord is ultimately the lord is a cause of everything and whatever is being created whatever is being maintained and whatever is being destroyed or you know dissolution and you know all these people who are involved with these activities ultimately they are all part and parcel of the lord and they have to accept the authority of the supreme lord this is this is this is a conclusion of this verse but if somebody thinks that you know i become an independent authority that you know i am separate i am something you know uh, independent fully independent if somebody thinks like that then you know this is this is simply a false conception like ahankar is there right ego is there that i exist but false ego false ego means that you think you are existing as a body you know you identify with this bag full of urine blood pus and stool and you think i am this you know this bodily conception as soon as one thinks like that then that ahankar that same ahankar becomes mithya ahankar false ego so same way one can be an authority ishwara a controller and execute so many things you know give orders and everything but if one thinks that i am independent authority i don't have to bow down to anybody then you know that becomes problematic this is simply a false conception is mithya is mithya this kind of ishwara bhavam or this kind of uh, you know this kind of having this kind of feeling you know that becomes big problem becomes very problematic and one has to face a consequences because you are out on your own out on your own. so this uh, verse is talking about from lord brahma to the small land there are so many different uh, living entities and everything starts with the creation the first thing is creation now the scientific view there are seven prominent theories of creation or srishti you know how how life has begun on earth you're talking about life because without life and without conscious symptoms there's no there's no there's no meaning even to comprehending you know this whole world and other things so if there is creation then we have to talk about life at first so this this origin of life actually there are so many theories and in the prominent among them uh, there are seven main theories which are being circulated within the scientific world so we will talk about that we will talk about the uh, what do you call that the spiritual view of how life comes from life which is a main bi kind of motto you know uh, and then why one should enquire about that supreme life atato brahma jigyasa and how ultimately that uh, supreme life is also a personality it has a personality god is a person you know these things we can discuss something about and then i will tell you one small story about uh, you know what happens when you don't accept the authority and what actually happens when you know uh, you follow the proper authority so there's one very nice story in the puranas in the ramayana we will talk about that so this first thing this uh, you know the seven uh, main theories about how life uh, started you know origin of life srishti so generally the scientists have this popular opinion that life on earth began more than 3 billion years ago 3 billion right and then from the very basic primordial soup somehow you know these all these wonderful tiny tiny living entities uh, you know microbes they manifested from that goo from the primordial soup and then through the zoo they progressed the different animals birds and different species ultimately to you means we are all descendants from monkeys you know this is very popular theory uh, our charles darwin's very famous theory of evolution natural selection this is one of them so basically what they're saying is that your great forefathers and you know the forefathers the grand 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 great great forefathers are all monkeys you know basically you are a you are a very beautiful version of a monkey this is this is what the scientists are trying to tell you you know this is a theory so the other different theories are there so this first theory they say it started with an electric spark you know lightning from above there's so much lightning the clouds they smash together and you know this huge lightning is created and somehow because these sparks are hitting this primordial soup 
and you know there are so many amino acids and sugars are generated this very famous experiment you know this uh, stanley miller and urey experiment with an uh, swan neck plus which actually uh, so how this life comes from life thing began actually you know propad guru maharaj was actually a student he was studying in california urban university so this nobel laureate in chemistry he came there and he was demonstrating this experiment right he said he put uh, he had this nice flask in which there was some current was passed with some basic uh, you know like hydrogen oxygen and other things in a liquid form uh, you know they, they were imagining that this is how the early atmosphere of the earth would have been and then they are passing this current you know using electrodes in place of the lightning and then you know they produce few amino acids in that uh, you know the flask so you know because the amino acids are the building blocks of life the conclusion is that this is how you know this chemical from chemicals life must have evolved so i think guru maharaj was sitting in the audience as a student he was doing his speech is at that time he got up and he asked you know you are just talking about building some amino acids right some basic chemicals but suppose i supply to you all the things you know which is required all the chemicals you know the dna the proteins the you know the vitamins the minerals whatever you require suppose i suppose you i supply to you do you think you can produce one living cell as was a question asked and then immediately that person replied oh that i cannot say and when propath heard that he immediately pounced on that and say see this guy you know he's a cheater they have given him the nobel prize for producing for this theory of producing life from chemicals but then he is saying he cannot say that means he's cheating and these people have given a cheater this nobel prize but actually according to the vedic version life can only come from life so you go to all the universities and colleges and you present this scientifically that life comes from life and that the supreme life you know the the origin of all life and matter is actually the supreme lord and the supreme lord god is a person you know and propad gave so much importance to this uh, what do you call that this the scientific preaching because it is very specialized preaching and these scientists particularly they are practically ruling the world you know they are like the high priests of kali yuga they are the ones who are dominating the whole show everywhere you go you know they ask you if it is a scientific conception right so so if one doesn't speak very scientifically and give all these kind of scientific proofs people may not accept what you're saying so because of that propad was saying this thing you know you go you go tell them no this is not possible you know, no matter how many materials how many how much uh, chemicals you can put together you will never be able to produce life life is eternally existing you know life energy it is also neither created nor destroyed but it can be covered by matter and matter is a by product of life this is what propas so this is the first theory the very shocking theory of electrical spark then there's a very chilling theory that you know um, among layers of ice in the arctic or antarctic where it is extremely cold you know maybe all these molecules were preserved somehow these tiny molecules and you know when there was little favorable situation they got together and you know life was produced like that you know deep within the ice this is another now this electric sparking was from above but maybe from underneath you know submarine under the water there may be some volcanic vent so this is another theory the third theory you know within the ocean under the ocean bed sometimes they may have these volcanic fault lines maybe something burst and you know the, because of the extreme heat and other things and because of all the available chemicals within the water salt water possible that some of life started from that then there is another theory where you know molecules maybe they met in clay you know like clay is molding maybe this clay on the surface of clay some or other all these uh, you know on the surfaces all these organic compounds could have somehow concentrated and you know help them organize into patterns much like a genes of today you know this is the word they are using <laughs> I, i don't know <laughs> you know clay is able to mold all these organic compounds into genes you know see you see the vivid imagination of all these scientists that some of other you know they cook up a theory and then they they say there's another theory that um, if you understand what how the dna has formed right because the dna the building the the dna the genetic matter it gives you a clue the dna produces proteins 
and these proteins also they produce dna it is a vice versa situation and in between there are these small rnas you know ribonucleic acids which can not only produce dna it also produces proteins but it also acts as an enzyme you know to produce both so they were trying if probably you understand how the rna has come and there is some missing link they 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 are saying that they have found this missing link how this rna has evolved and it is producing all this dna and proteins and ultimately all these different life forms you know so there is one more theory and the final theory is uh, i mean there's two more they say life if had some simple beginnings that you know within this primordial soup maybe some kind of simple capsule was formed and within the capsule all these molecules they they could interact in a better way and some of you know life manifested and the final theory is out of this world they say you know maybe there was a there was some kind of blast you know comet or something blasted from mars or some other different planet and then you know life was carried here is a theory of panspermia they call it like that somehow life it came here and then you know we are basically products of aliens some alien life came to the earth and then it evolved and somehow so all these different theories are there but you know the ultimate <laughs> the ultimate funny the, uh, beyond you know beyond all these mysteries the ultimate funny thing is that the scientists they admit that they don't even have a good definition of what is life you know forget about how life originated they cannot even define life properly scientists they admit that they openly admit that so having given all these uh, you know the scientific prominent theories now we come to the the spiritual thing where it is very simple you know life comes from life it's pretty obvious i am a living person so naturally you know my parents they have to be living in order to produce me it's a very simple logical thing you see every day you don't see just like that life manifesting from dead stone you know the life comes from life proba said and louis pasteur he has also proved this he is a french uh, scientist you know he's won a nobel award also for that he has proved that you know unless there is some living entity you know it will the another life cannot be produced so it's 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 not possible you know this microorganisms another th- thing he was doing all these vaccination things and other things you know research on that and this louis pasteur has given this thing but still you know it is it is very 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 convenient actually for the scientists to defy the authority because if they accept that there is god and god is supreme life and you know life has produced life then where will they go for the funding but if they say there is no god and then you know that we are the ones who are like god like and we are the ones who are going to create all these living entities we are the ones who are going to produce life in our laboratories and actually you know the funds will pour because it's an amazing thing It's not an ordinary thing to produce life, you know, one life. So the scientists, just for the sake, although repeated attempts over many millions of years, they have been many thousands of years, many hundreds of years, they have been doing this. It's not possible to produce life without, if the exception of life. You know, life has to come from life. It's a very basic theory. so this 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 uh, most wonderful theory of creation ultimately prabhupada summed it up very nicely saying that life comes from life so narad muni had this doubt he is seeing that all the living entities are being produced by lord brahma lord brahma vidhi swayambhu and uh, he is a prajapati the original prajapati the pitama lord brahma he you know we produces all these living entities within the entire universe he also produces a different planetary systems so narad muni had this doubt my dear father to my knowledge and narad muni is produced from the complete proper deliberation of lord brahma you know brahma ji is so capable if he owns he can produce one living entity if he sheds one hair you know one living entity will come if he sneezes one living entity will appear and it, it, from a shadow even the shadow of lord brahma living entities they appear you know he is that powerful empowered so narad muni is approaching him and said you know i have come from your deliberation i have been born from the deliberation of brahma you know the proper deliberation of you so i have seen that all these living entities are being are being produced by you but i am also seeing that you are also sitting and you are meditating on somebody and you are praying to somebody so you please reveal to me you know very nicely that whether you are the real authority or the real source of all the living entities or is there somebody superior to you? you know there is some other higher authority who is also beyond you 
who's above you? you please reveal this to me so then brahma ji is saying govindam adi purusham tamaham you know ishwara parama krishna supreme controller the supreme creator parama krishna you know the topmost is lord krishna and what is that ishwara parama krishna sachidananda vigraha anadir adir govinda sarva karana he is ultimate cause of all causes so i am always worshiping and i am praying the supreme personality lord sri krishna govindam adi purusham so narad muni he becomes enlightened in the signs and he understands that even brahma you know the so called so powerful brahma lord brahma who is like the pitama the great grandfather of this universe from whom all the living entities the demigods and you know all kind of creatures every everybody is practically being manifested from this lord brahma and even this lord brahma is just one amsha and amsha when tiny small portion of the portion of the lord narad muni he comes he he gets enlightened see whatever we are getting knowledge we get it from some authority you know whether it is our parents whether it is our teachers or you know the professors in college or outside in the world you know some experienced person but as far as spiritual knowledge is concerned all this knowledge descends from one single authority and that supreme authority is lord krishna so ultimately if that knowledge is coming from krishna if the knowledge is represented by a bona fide representative it is being given by a bona fide representative then this knowledge propa said any knowledge which is coming in a bona fide parampara is scientific this is the word propa used so what do you mean by actually scientific knowledge means if it comes in the parampara bona fide parampara then it is scientific knowledge otherwise it is simply the speculation it may be right or wrong but it is a speculation of some personality some person has been speculating so now coming to the point of this authority because the time is running short there is this very nice story right because propad this in this purport propad this thing i mean in the translation you know it is said suppose they think that they are separate lords they it is simply merely false prestige this is not valid it's not valid you know sometimes people they you know when we talk to people talking about all these uh, spiritual ideas they sometimes say prabhu you you are just talking 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 you know these authorities are simply ordering 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 do this do this do this but then you know see suppose i am talking i am also listening right both the things are going on it's not that i am simply you know saying something but i am also listening to what i am saying same way if the authorities are ordering you at the same time they are also serving and following some other authority they are not only serving you but they are also serving their authority but the whole problem starts when they start thinking that i am independent you know you become a independent authority that i can do whatever i want without being authorized or without being how do you say without being under a proper authority a bona fide authority without this thing being sanctioned then you know you you have to face the consequences yourself whatever actions and reactions which will come as a as a outcome you know you will be held responsible for all of it. but if you have another higher authority a bona fide authority immediately you can say you know this see whatever i have done i have done because you know i was instructed to do that and you are safe your position is safe you just pass on the bug right and that authority will say yes my authority has said me and it will go all the way ultimately to krishna and lord krishna can deal with any problems we may not be able to do that but lord can do it this is a process so now the question comes whether this authority is bona fide or not how do we know if it is bona fide authority it is a simple thing is he following his authority 100% or is there you know some discrepancy is he adding or subtracting something to the original authority and even if that authority makes a mistake our process is that we accept it and we follow you know because we don't know we are ignorant once you have established this is a bona fide authority even if the authority sometimes makes a small mistake even still we should accept and we should follow this is what propad is saying there is a conversation actually you no know, propad was talking in mayapur and uh, this this devotee one uh, particular devotee jagannath das was somebody you know he was he was editing that thing and he has completely changed the meaning of that thing and you know they were thinking that propad in no english 
and then you know so they were making these words in a very nice way so that it is you know uh, making that kind of correction so that people can understand this thing and accept and propas became very upset he even complained about another professor he said he completely changed all these words in the you know easy journey to other planets he changed all this thing and even i don't understand what i've written they have made this so confusing propas was saying this so as soon as you don't accept authority you become asara you become useless you become useless the very thing so here is the story and then we will wind up you know the story of trishanku and uh, vishamitra muni right trishanku he is uh, suryavamshi king in the line of uh, you know lord ramchandra ikshvaku like that a very famous king very handsome personality and you know, all of a sudden he de- developed this desire let me go to swargaluga in this same body like ravan he, he he was building a staircase to go directly to heaven so that you don't have to do any sacrifice and you know any any person xyz can just walk up the stairs and go to swargaluga the ravan was trying to do that so this personality he didn't go to that extreme he was just thinking okay you know in this very body this very nice handsome body i want to go to swargaluga he approached vashishta muni his kula guru and vasishamuni said no it's not possible you know you cannot go in this human form you have to do you know a lot of sacrifices gain lot of punya karma pay as credit and then you will get a divine body eligible body and then you can go there it's not possible like this no i cannot do this way so the king right the king stubborn king he has developed a strong desire somehow i have to go so the first authority is uh, authority he has rejected he is searching for other authorities now you know so that his desire will be fulfilled so he wandering around the earth he comes to meet this hundred sons of uh, vasishtha muni and he approaches a group of elder brothers and he requests the same thing and they said no father has denied it father is authority we have to obey we cannot we cannot do this go so he approaches the younger sons you know hundred of them he approaches the first elder ones now he is going to the younger ones and then he is asking the same thing and one of them becomes so upset with this guy he curses him actually you are such a rascal you know the father has said no elder brother has said, said no how do you think that we will agree to this proposition right and because you are so much attached to this body of yours thinking it is so handsome that it is fitting to go to the swarga loga i curse you you become a chandal and this beautiful body immediately becomes black the hair and all is scattered and matted and you know all the gold ornaments have become iron and this blackish horrible looking personality is going to the kingdom and trishanku is saying i am the raja of this place uh, naturally you know what the people will do they all beat him up and they you know they throw him out of the king so he was again he was still so persistent this guy <laughs> he still wanted to you know fulfill his desire he was wandering and then ultimately he somehow came to know that vishwamitra muni and uh, vasishtha muni they have some cold war hot war going on they were at loggerheads so let me take advantage of the situation and with all this diplomacy he is approaching vishwamitra muni and saying go oh, vasishtha muni said that you cannot send me in this body to sargulo vishwamitra muni is oh did he say that you see i will use all my powers of tapasya and i will send you in this very body to sargulo or my name is not vishwamitra you should see so then you know he made this big yagya fire sacrifice and he invited all the demigods and most of them they became scared because vishwamitra muni would curse them so they came actually but not the prominent ones like indra and you know the big demigods the principal demigods they didn't turn up because this is total bogus you know this thing what was being done so this uh, trishanku what he did was he uh, vishamitra muni did the sacrifice and you know the ahuti final ahuti swaha and then go to heaven you know vishamitra used all his power and pushed and like a rocket uh, trishanku he shot up uh, like this shooting star he went straight up to swargalok and indra sitting in swargalok and looking what is this black thing coming up here oh we cannot allow this so indra kicks him from there and then you know upside down head down this fellow is falling again the same speed like a rocket so this happened like two three times you know going up and down like a football and you know trishanku put up his hands please 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 stop you know i i cannot take this anymore 
So then both of them, you know, both of them, Indra wouldn't leave and Vishamitra Muni is also not leaving. So ultimately Vishamitra Muni said, okay, you, you, you cannot do this and I will make another Swarga. And with all his powers, you know, he manifested one beautiful Swarga Loga, 10 times more opulent than Indra Swarga. And Trishanku is sitting with all his full black body there as a, uh, as a new Indra. You know, on the southern side of the universe, when Sarugulaga was created. But then, you know, because because he exhausted all his uh, powers, you know, Vishwamitra Muni, whatever powers he had with, with many thousands of years of tapasya, so this, this planetary system, this Sarugulaga started to fall down towards the earth planet. See, they create, and then they cannot maintain the creation. And they cannot dissolve it in a proper way, but whatever they create, it creates 10 more problems, 20 more problems for us. So immediately Vishwamitra Muni is surrendered to the Lord. My Lord, hurry, please, please protect. It is falling towards earth. All the living entities will be smashed. You know, this is my mistake. Please forgive me. Uh, the Lord appeared and he said, yes. Why did you make something that you cannot maintain? You know, so it's all right. Now, because you have surrendered, okay. The Lord waved the hands and the Trishanku Swarga, it kind of uh, vanished. So, see, because he didn't accept the authority, Trishanku, this whole thing happened, right? And because Vishwamitra Muni accepted the authority of the Supreme Lord, the result was that the Lord agreed to become his disciple as Lord Ramchandra. He accepted Vishwamitra Muni as his guru. See, spiritual, spirituality is not a one-sided thing. You know, somebody is sitting and ordering and the other person has to do it. It's not like that. You know, there is a reciprocation. The person who is ordering you, he is also serving you. So if there are people in authoritative positions, you please cut them some slack. You know? Because we have this very rebellious tendency. We, we don't accept the authority of the Lord. And this thing is kind of carried over down. But if somebody is doing something bona fide, and even sometimes these authorities, they may be making a mistake, you know, you can overlook it. Unless it is a big glaring mistake, then, you know, you may be, you may be going to some, you know, senior person and requesting them to talk to them a little nicely. See, devotees, they are always amenable. A devotee is very accommodating because that is the essence of spirituality. Spirituality means you can accommodate everybody. Even the demons, you see, they, they find a place in Krishna Leela. And a devotee is a devotee, you know, no matter how, how Kanishta he may be, how fallen he may be, still that person, he has accepted the authority of the Lord to some degree. He's accepting, yes, Krishna is the Supreme Personality. You know, maybe sometimes because of this forgetful nature or because of past habits, sometimes that, you know, that thing comes out that he tries to be an independent authority, but very quickly, Shipram Bhavati Dharmatma, you know, Krishna is saying, very quickly, I will correct this person. So we should give them some certain allowances at particular time. And, but the main thing is that ultimately, we should all be fully aware that Krishna is the one who is the main authority. You know? Govindam, Adi Purusham, Tamaham, Puja. And always, we should be in that mood of surrender that, my Lord, yes, you are the supreme authority. You know, whatever you say, Bhakta, not, uh, what is it? Bhakta, Bhakta, Sya, you know, the, not only the devotee, Mat Bhakta, but Bhakta is Bhakta or so whatever they say, because they are addicted to the Lord, my Lord, I will fall. And today is uh, Sripad Ramanuja Charya's appearance day, very auspicious day. And uh, one of the last uh, Ramanuja Charya's instruction was, you go to this place, Melkotai, and you stay there. You put a small ashram, you stay there, you do your bhajan. He said that. But even if you are not able to do that, he said, you stay under the shadow of a devotee. This was Lord Ra Sripad Ramanuja Acharya's, you know, the Sri Sampradaya main Acharya's instruction. You be under the shadow of the shelter of a devotee. Because for us devotees, the devotees are always authority. So with this, I'd like to conclude. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Any, any suggestions, any questions, any comments? Hare Krishna. Jai. Ramanuja Acharya ki Jai. Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you for this wonderful class. Yeah, if anyone is having any question or any point, uh, yes, uh, Valramji, please ask your question. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavat Yeah, very nice uh, description. Uh, uh, I have uh, yeah, comment, uh, come question. 
Um, I mean, when we say the engineers uh, are the uh, the free will that we have, using the free will, we can engineer things or manipulate things. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in research publications, uh, or uh, uh, even in the spiritual publications, we claim the authority because uh, we wrote that uh, uh, publication or we have done the uh, research work. Yeah. And um, I mean, when we say uh, we, I mean, in those publications, nobody claims that they are the creator of the things, but they claim that the theory or the scientific understanding they have provided there is their uh, uh, engineering or manipulation, uh, whatever research they have done. And the, uh, I mean, in this way, the claim the uh, authority, I mean, the, the claim they make uh, is basically the claim on the theory that they make or the understanding that they have. Uh, they don't claim as the creator. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I mean, when we say uh, in, uh, in scripture, God is the creator, uh, but the secondary, uh, like uh, Brahma, uh, who, who created the, or the engineer, the things. Uh, so in that case, uh, Brahma also claims uh, certain things that he is uh, doing that. But although he is not the uh, creator of uh, the original elements, but he has... Uh, uh, provided or the created uh, the the associated things that uh, one needs using the original created things. Original so all and yeah. Good. So all these uh, theories are uh, just to understand the science behind the process or the process of creation. Uh, so I I mean I think nobody claims as such they created the uh, the living entities or the uh, but they claim the theories that they provide or the possible yeah. theories they provide are their creation. So, I mean, in this way, in scriptures also, we don't have uh, uh, clear uh, evidence that uh, uh, the uh, God is the creator. That's why the, the um, I mean, uh, evidence means the practical evidence. We cannot... Uh, uh, prove to some other person that God is the uh, creator. It's uh, it's our faith. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how do you? This, yeah, yeah. Uh, in um, I mean, uh, when we say uh, if, <coughs> if we cannot uh, practically demonstrate the things, then nobody will believe it. So mm -hmm. it depends on our faith. So ultimately, faith is the uh, ultimate. Uh, I mean, thing. Uh, so in this way, the theories, uh, 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 those are provided, none of the theories, even I mean, including the scriptures, can practically demonstrate that God is the creator. Yeah. Uh, it's all our uh, faith. Yeah? Right. Yeah. So in this way, uh, what do we do? Let's say when we have uh, uh, some publication, uh, research publication or, uh, or the uh, uh, spiritual publication. So there we claim the authorship. Also in many songs I see uh, people write at the end, uh, uh, somebody says uh, this thing like that. Uh, they claim that uh, it's ultimately the claim that uh, uh, they have made this song or they have uh, uh, written this song. Yeah. So, so don't you think those are also a kind of uh, claim uh, that they, they have the authorship? It doesn't matter whether it's spiritual or uh, material. Yeah, material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, the first thing is that regarding this uh, authority that we cannot prove that God is actually the creator. See, Prabhupada used to give this example. He used to say, like, you're the son, right? You're the child. Now, your mother is there. Now, who will tell you who your father is? Who is the best authority to tell you who your father is? If as a child, without knowing, there are so many male people, you know, all around the world, without knowing, actually, without accepting the authority of your mom, if you're going to try to find out who is your father, this is something beyond you, inconceivable to you, right? Because you are born afterwards. You, you, you were not there when the father was there. You know, you were not there when you were produced, you know, when you are born. Till that particular point of time, you don't know anything. So once you are born, 
and you want to know who your father is there is only one solution to that you have to go and approach your mother she is authority and she says this is your father you have to accept she may be lying also okay that possibility is there but ultimately you cannot overrule what she is saying it's the same way like this in spiritual life you know see in science many people they claim that you know i the scientists they do claim that we have created life i have read that personally myself i have articles there you know cut outs with me they they have taken one small portion of some uh, you know this dna spliced it and put it into a bacteria and they say artificially made the dna and they are saying that we have created a new life they say this but they used a existing living microbe you know one bacteria which was already living so that point is not valid but they say they have still created a new life this is what they claim you understand what i'm saying they do make these claims but whatever mm. be the thing we have to accept some authority whatever authority you accept ultimately if that authority is bona fide if especially if it comes in the parampara then we can understand that you know we we cannot we cannot argue you know there is no question arguing that because it is beyond our experience it is within that uh, you know we we observe things within a limited period of time you know time and space we don't know what happened before that we don't know what happened after that in between we come to some certain conclusions and even these conclusions are completely influenced by you know the time place circumstances the environment and all the kind of people you meet with and the kind of knowledge you develop so everything basically ultimately rests on authority so if you think that you know these people the especially the parampara people who are bona fide devotees in the parampara are cheating you and you know you think that they might be doing something because everybody repeats the same thing and they say only krishna is the original creator they don't say anything different so if you are really sincere and serious and you accept that and you work towards that then one day you can actually see that krishna is doing all this you can you can see that but as far as science is concerned they have all these wonderful theories but there is no way many of them are able to prove all these different theories and it, it even to you it sounds very you know silly sometimes Mm-hmm. it sounds very silly you know even rationally you think about it the possibility of life coming from all these chemicals it is very very silly so if you actually see propad and all these other acharyas they say unless one is very qualified and one is very much blessed by these uh, superior authorities unless they have sanctioned it one should not dare write anything about spiritual literatures one should not even make an effort you can write your speculative theories you can write so many things but as far as spiritual life is concerned you shouldn't dare to do it it's very 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 clear because if you're going to write something and if it is not bona fide if it is not authorized it is not sanctioned it will cause more problems than you know benefit this is the main thing mm. but when 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 it is when it is being authorized even though there may be so much faults there may be so many mistakes still people who are thoroughly honest and pure will accept it mm-hmm. you see the propas many earlier writings that english was uh, you know a, the english was there were I mean, probably a lot of grammatical mistakes and you know so many differences in the expression but because ultimately it was his guru's order it has been authorized you see the millions of propas gitas and all the other books are being distributed worldwide so this following this authority is a primary thing no as far as faith is concerned faith means you know you have faith on something sublime you know not any ordinary thing so the sublime something sublime right something transcendental if you think that you know these 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 people who are coming in the parampara fit that description eh hey, you go for it but otherwise what can be done you know everybody has this independence even lord krishna doesn't come and interfere in your independence you know you can think what you like there's no there's no way anybody can stop that but you know because we are hearing this from these people and i have full faith that my guru maharaj will not cheat me i have full faith like people like chaitanya mahaprabhu people like you know prabhupad people like bhakti siddhant these people who have completely dedicated their lives they wouldn't say you know something here and that they wouldn't give some nonsense theories and i also have this faith that these people have seen the truth because they speak so convincingly they have practically seen krishna face to face this this faith i have so i am able to follow so if you are developing this kind of faith or belief in something sublime then it will take you towards that sublime life otherwise you put your faith in the wrong thing you see you will land up with the wrong uh, conclusion
This is the thing. So, you know, you, Prabhupada said, uh, Guru Maharaj used to say me, you're an educated person, Madan. You know, Prabhu, you're a highly educated person. You, <laughs> you can come to your own conclusions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Roji, very nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, the mother cannot uh, tell the lie. <laughs> yeah. Why should she? Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah. Why should mm -hmm. she? Why should she? Mm -hmm. The son is making an honest enquiry. Naturally, the mother will very proudly, she will say, yes, this is your husband, father, you know, this is my husband. Yes, so, yes, Roji, that is at the very highest level. Uh, but when we, when we say the, uh, the claims that we make uh, yeah. on the publications or uh, small, small things, yeah. So those claims are basically the claims on the possible uh, explanations or the possible understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, See, if anything is not authorized, then, you know, even though it may be perfectly composed, it is still all like, you know, the Bhagavatam is saying, Vayasam Tirtam Ushanti Manasa. Vayasam means where the crows gather, you know, the garbage, something like that. It's all materialistic. One day it will be finished. It may be very nicely composed, very beautifully done, but ultimately this is what happens. But if this thing is being authorized and sanctioned, and you know, even though there are thousand and one mistakes in that, because the intention is pure and it is coming from a bona fide authority, so although with all these faults, still it is being accepted and that thing will become very popular. You can see this. The result will be there. You know, the results will be there. Yes, Prabhuji. Very nice. Thank yeah. you very much. Hare Thank Krishna. you. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Balramji, and uh, thank you, Madan Manohar Prabhuji, for that answer. Yeah. Yes, uh, anyone else? Yes, our uh, Maharaji is having something. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanod Pranam. Dhanod Maharaj, Dhanod. He gave a very nice uh, direction for all of us. But little fast. <laughs> Too much information to store in our small brains. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to finish within the time, Mara. That's why. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you spread it uh, in uh, different uh, weeks and also give small, small, I mean, uh, in packets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. So this uh, regarding these books uh, changing, no, Prabhupada. Yeah. So that remaining me for us. Our Guru Maharaj is very particular that his books are properly edited. <clears throat> of course, not that everybody anybody can uh, edit it. Edit it. Yeah. I will let. I will. Uh, I will tell about that also. <clears throat> See, we have made one. Uh, Guru Maharaj wanted one booklet. Yeah. No, we we made that. Uh, what is that? Sevanjali. Right. Yeah. So we mostly kept it as it is from the uh, transcription. Yeah. And then Guru went to uh, trip, and uh, it is to be ready by Vyas Puja. Supposed to be ready by Vyas Puja. So we didn't have enough time to. Uh, what you call to improve it, or we are not thinking to improve it because Guru Mukha Padma Vakya as it is, we should just put it. <laughs> so, so we just printed it because uh, it's mostly about uh, services to Guru Maharaj. So, when Guru Maharaj came back and saw this printed, and Guru Maharaj was not happy that uh, you know, you just printed as it is, the spoken. <laughs> the when we speak is different, when we write is different. different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So <clears throat> I will go a little bit away because Maharaj is here. Oh, you are good. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> so then uh, we have printed uh, maybe thousand copies or something, I don't remember. And then Guruma said, we are not going to distribute these books. <laughs> uh -huh. So the books are there still here in Kolkata. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, context also is important. 
first context is the <coughs> philosophy is very important at time what proper is conveying <coughs> so that philosophy or content should be kept intact yeah and because they may be new also they don't know the philosophy also properly or what proper is trying to say <coughs> so it is very important to know the mind of the author Mm. editing is not just english editing <clears throat> english editing you can do but uh, in the spiritual matters it is important to know the mind of the author uh, so, mood mood yeah. mood not just mood mind mind mood and yeah. mind also mood and mind yeah. what is his mood and what he want to convey <clears throat> is very important so so that book is a lesson for us so <laughs> that uh, so guru has uh, <clears throat> so guru has trying to train many people in this writing you know so he found one or two but they are not with guru maharaj <clears throat> yeah one or two boys probably you know them from yeah. bombay <laughs> they are very exalted expert devotees but not with guru maharaj means uh, <clears throat> so some of them are i am writing books also now <clears throat> very i mean scholarly but not uh, able to assist guru maharaj because of their uh, again false prestige <clears throat> so finally guru has found one person who was able to pick up guru maharaj mind and uh, uh, also what he want to convey mind and mood so and guru maharaj personally told me one time that uh, our rajendra he is uh, he developed nicely and he knows my mind like that so our uh, books publications we our guru has uh, specifically told he will lead and uh, he is trained and guru is happy so <clears throat> we hope somebody some people will also come up under rajendra maharaj in future that uh, our books why i am telling this is that uh, some people they uh, <clears throat> they think the books that are printed in gurumas time they are fine but after gurumas left those books are not authorized <laughs> <laughs> In, inevitable conclusion <laughs> <laughs> because these people are changing something <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, propad is that if you change propad you lot approve it guru maharaj is that if you don't change properly guru maharaj will not approve <laughs> because our readers are not ordinary people yeah scholarly scholarly people so uh, guru maharaj books so there is an authorized person who is uh, taking care and uh, in fact uh, our rajender maharaj once told me that guru maharaj after every book he comes to him and tells him how he can print because in guru maharaj presence he would never print anything without guru maharaj approval so same thing is after also is following the same and uh, he keeps that book one year two years like that until guru maharaj comes and tells <clears throat> even now <clears throat> so uh that kind of uh, uh, relationship develops one one is very uh, humble and i myself also got one time this uh, and this life and uh, origin conference no rome conference proceedings yeah life and its origin <laughs> so so i got a dream also i, I think i wrote also in the forum if you read it that uh, <clears throat> uh, so this when this book is uh, over we we all go and, go and went present to guru maharaj this book basically rajendra maharaj is in the print and uh, guru maharaj uh, was very happy with the book and said uh, krishna is waiting for you <laughs> means very small seva he is uh, so this we should not have doubt some people some who are false ego or false prestige or prejudice they may have but those who are our core team or close people they should know they should this, uh, our publications are thoroughly authorized by guru maharaj and guru maharaj thoroughly trained our uh, maharaj mainly i am there but 
he is a person <clears throat> so we should not forget that and one more thing is that uh, this uh, life comes from life no that book guru mas uh, was telling that uh, that is meant for uh, internal people the conversations are uh, <clears throat> i mean even if they are published they should be published in a proper way so that others are not offended <laughs> mm. also they are meant for internal uh, internal things so because by reading that book many dudes also become very upset not upset they also become like proper rascal scientist <laughs> 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 so uh, something some conversations they are not meant to be out meant to be public so somehow we got hold of a uh, recording and i feel like i am the savior of the world by putting this uh, recording on the website or by publishing it so sometimes we may be doing the opposite instead of pleasing we may end up uh, not pleasing <clears throat> not so, pleasing uh, not pleasing yes so these are so one should be a little bit mature but what happens because of our false prestige before we purify ourselves we try to be independent and as soon as we have little talent is there that is the biggest problem to the educated people we all have different talents and we can very easily copy others <laughs> and imitate imitate and uh, so therefore we think i am i can do i am capable of doing <laughs> so this we should be a little bit careful and uh, should meditate upon guru maharaj what what i am authorized what i am not <laughs> so <clears throat> that one has to do meditation for oneself <laughs> because if we try to uh, indicate or force or tell people get more upset so <clears throat> so both are there so we have to meditate what i am authorized what i am not and uh, whether i am mature enough to do what i am doing so this publication thing is good just wanted to tell because from yeah, this somebody may conclude that so guru mahal books also should not be touched or edited so i am just telling you the uh, our uh, what is there our maharaj is here he will not like to tell this is internal things to outside so that's why i told i have to go other place but maharaj is very humble when i said he himself left the place <laughs> so such a humble person maharaj ji hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna thank you maharaj that was very enlightening <laughs> i generally when i say something i don't mean it uh, to go this deep <laughs> i'm just you know, <laughs> but anyway it is good no no it's good good open. it yeah, is good it's both it's are important you know we are also worried about propad books also uh, i mean uh, propad english is good enough to understand it is not very and i think very... maharaj uh, one small request the sevanjali you are saying can mm. i get a copy at least to read or mara said don't give it to anybody <laughs> no 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 you will not get a copy <laughs> okay <laughs> probably so... we can slowly revive that and uh, yeah but we, uh, <clears throat> yeah we can do or we can do a little bit better way because when it goes to you then it will go to go 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 and uh, somebody may no, got no, no, hold of this and no maraj no maraj i think in that in that there will be the year that is yeri guru was present somebody may think this is authorized <laughs> guru was <laughs> it is published in guru was time <laughs> so no but we can uh, redo or something in future no i am giving example yeah, otherwise yeah, uh, uh, it is uh, may not be example practical example what has happened also in propas time also what has happened important for us in guruvas time also what has happened is important what guruvas uh, is <clears throat> so guruvas used to tell me different different people what what everybody is good at <laughs> and hoping that i will become all of them together but uh, that is not to be the case but uh, at least guruvas used to tell me who is person is good in what and uh, different different devotees different things so this is uh, uh, we are still happy 
our Vajendra Bhaya is still around. And one more thing, Guru has told that when we are publishing this Bhagavad Sri Arpanam, yeah. uh, we are, that is mostly pictorial, not much text is there. Just two, three pages. So one day we were in uh, Chennai <coughs> in Vijay Gwanda Prabhu's house. We were working on a book with Guru Has. Yeah. So <coughs> Guru Has told our <coughs> Rajendra Maharaj, in future you write my life biography. Hmm. Because many people write whatever they like. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. <coughs> So this I am personally there, and uh, and and he Guru Maharaj looked at me and told you do the <clears throat> you do the designing something like that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, any of you interested in helping Guru Maharaj biography, please contact Maharaj. This work is going on. It's a big work. We need people who are sincere. Even if some people who are good at writing, they are good in writing. Sometimes they can come and stay in Kolkata for some time, and. Uh, biography we can slowly make up because uh, <clears throat> recently we saw some people they wanted to write because there is no biography of Maharaj so I think we should do it so that yeah. everyone is properly presented Hare Krishna Ruta, sorry for taking too much time no Maharaj please <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj thank, thank you for sharing those things yes go on Maharaj please Actually, I uh, yeah, in the Krishna. post session, I, I I got awakened. Actually, okay. <laughs> you know the interesting point Maharaj made. Uh, there's sometime uh, you know too 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 literally is too simplistic, and that's why the again that quotation comes. You know that uh, uh, in the name of uh, literally and the way I. First, I think I understand it could be very static. We have to be ecstatic. We have to change the ongoing mood and uh, the mind of the spiritual master. That's very critical, you know, it's a, it's a very special blessing. So we cannot just uh, imagine, uh, just uh, think that it could be my pie. We have to recognize uh, who have been blessed. So, in, in that regard, I have a uh, question you want to deliver regarding this uh, publication. Even the conversation which Shri Prabhupada had with the Guru Mahas direct and how Guru Mahas would react. Sometimes his reaction would be very minimal. Mostly it would be absorbing. Mostly he will try to imbibe what Prabhupada is hinting at rather than just uh, some. Some stalwart or some uh, making his comment on on what Prabhupada is trying to say. The mood of Sri Prabhupada is uh, Guru Maharaj was very very unique. Even in the famous, uh, you know, when Prabhupada says, uh, "Oh, so uh, life came from chemicals. Why they don't come now?" And he, as if Prabhupada was pointing on that matter to Guru Maharaj, as if Guru Maharaj was the but uh, Guru Mahaj was simply, simply reacting how profound, how huge is going to the impact. And then Prabhupada in his uh, non-challengedness, in his uh, total fear-free freedom, he's saying rascals, 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 they say, life came from cancer. why don't they come now? <laughs> and uh, can you imagine the whole focus is on Swarup Damodar? The lone scientist, and he he gets it. <laughs> he doesn't need anybody else's comments. And uh, the post uh, humor so called, oh, uh, this was the work given to Swarup Damodar Maharaj, and uh, he just kept quiet. He didn't do anything. Uh, he didn't follow the mood of Prabhupada and all these things. So this rubbish uh, is still flying. But see the profund profundity. And how to tackle these intellectual people who will have every moment coming up with new ideas, new intelligence, new in independence, and all these uh, egos and all these things. It requires tremendous, tremendously grounded person like Guru Maharaj. 
I can, being a known scientist, uh, so called assistant, I cannot even fathom uh, uh, the depth of. Uh, depth of uh, the weightage which Guru Mahaj uh, took, uh, he gave his career, he, he sacrificed uh, everything from uh, so-called point of view to become famous and uh, coveted or something like that. He just, uh, he gave it all out. If uh, any one of us can see it, uh, we will connect to that uh, special connection otherwise world goes its own way and uh, independence is disease nobody wants to identify with the, with the purity or the dedication of anyone else but it was a wonderful discussion you started with from seven i thought uh, we could buy only five <laughs> two are in in, in between um, um, I think they are they are taken care of, but uh, this publication and the mood of uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, I think uh, uh, someone has to continue. As someone is continuing, as Maharaj said, and uh, uh, let us let us pray that uh, more assistance, uh, more sincere and dedicated souls come in generations and now to continue the same same. Uh, same thought process, same thought, uh, mood, and because uh, Guru Maharaj once said that our mission will outlive all of us. So as much as we can become consumed by the mission, that that that's the beauty of it. To remain consumed, and uh, that's it. We have done our part, and we will be left with no other distraction. Total consumption. Is a necessity and the essential part. Hare Krishna. Very inspiring, and Maharaj's input was very wonderful. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, thank you, Maharaj. And uh, yes, Prabhuji, uh, maybe we can. can yeah. Yeah. Jai Guru Maharaj, Shri Sripad ki jai. Jai. Jai Shri Sripad Transcendental Books ki jai. Jai. Jai Prabhupad ki jai. Jai Samvad B A Bhaktavrindh ki jai. Jai Shri Pad Ramana Jacharya ki jai. Jai Grantra Shri Mat Bhagavatam ki jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. His Grace Madan Manohar Prabhu ki jai. Thank you all for joining. See you all in tomorrow's class. Hare Krishna.